welcome to a year of HitchcockMovies.com. We are your hosts, Jeff and Diane, and this is movie number eight, The Skin Game from 1931. Um, we're having a matinee today. This is our first afternoon uh, review, so you're probably noticing uh, we're a little brighter. This is what we look like during the day. Uh, well, today we have no murders, but we've got some good blackmail and uh, uh, evil domineering mother of sorts, so that's, uh, that's a little Hitchcockian. Uh, this movie, to our movie today, is based on a play, There's a Shock, uh, written by John Galsworthy. John Galsworthy uh, won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1932, the year after this picture was made. The play was written in 1920, uh, and it was very successful. It was made into a silent film the year after, and we'll talk a little bit more about that silent film in a moment. Now the timing of this play is uh, being in 1920 is actually very important because it was written just a few years after World War I ended. Uh, now it has nothing to do with World War I itself, but it has everything to do with the changing of public's perception of the establishment, and in the case of England, the aristocracy. Um, so you had uh, the, 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 the people feeling that World War I was caused by the aristocracy and the unprecedented loss of life uh, being caused by the bungling aristocratic generals. So um, it, it really is, uh, is sort of signaling the beginning of, of change. So here's this play pitting uh, the two families against each other, the established family and the up-and-coming, newly, newly rich, uh, self-made family. New money against old money. Uh, the established family is the Hillcrests, and they've been uh, living on a manor for, for many, many generations. And you've got the hornblowers. They've made all their money. They're 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 up and coming. They're self-made, um, and they're fighting over a piece of land. Basically, the hornblowers want to buy the land and build a factory and build housing for all of their workers. And Hillcrests, well, they they don't want that. They like it just the way it is. They it's a meadow. It's a nice view out their window. It's been like that forever, and they want to keep it just the way it is. Uh, so so there you have it. Uh, in a way, in writing this play, Galsworthy basically predicted what was going to happen in the 20s. You know, the rise of the middle class, uh, the change of values, the, the flapper girls, the end of Victorian values, as it were. Uh, one of the characters, uh, the Hillcrest, uh, their daughter is, is kind of an early version of a flapper in, uh, in her sort of more modern way of thinking uh, and, and her attitudes and her outlook. So, now as mentioned, this was a silent film 10 years earlier in 1921, and what's interesting about that is two of the main characters in our movie today were in that silent uh, film. Uh, Edmund Gwynn, who plays Mr. Hornblower, uh, he, uh, he, Hitchcock loved this guy. Hitchcock put him in a few more movies, uh, Ford Correspondent, where he's very good, and uh, also in The Trouble with Harry. Uh, he plays Mr. Hornblower. You also may recognize Edmund Gwynn because he played Kris Kringle in the movie Miracle on 34th Street. Uh, the other actor that was in uh, this, this early film was Helen Hay. She plays Mrs. Hillcrest. Um, Hitchcock uses her again in the movie The 39 Steps. Two other people to keep track of in this movie, uh, Chloe and Mr. Docker. Chloe is the daughter-in-law of Mr. Hornblower, and Mr. Docker works for the Hillcrests. He, he does their dirty work, so they're, they're kind of enemies. What's interesting is these two actors were actually in the movie Murder from last week. This is Phyllis Constam and Ted Markham, who were Ted and Ducey in, in that play. Uh, and, and Phyllis Constant, of course, being the one in uh, Blackmail who was saying knife, knife, knife. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're seeing them again. They're enemies in this particular movie. Now, one of the things that bugs us about movies uh, in, sometimes is when they have two characters that look kind of identical. They look exactly the same. And that happens in this movie. Jill looks a lot like Chloe. Jill's the daughter of the rich and Chloe's the daughter-in-law of the up-and-coming family. Uh, so a good way to keep uh, them apart is Jill, if you see her riding a horse and playing with the dog and talking to her father and she seems pretty happy, that's Jill. Uh, Chloe pretty much is stressed out throughout the whole entire movie and she just gets more and more stressed out as the movie goes along. So Now this, uh, this play was adapted by Alfred and Alma, but it really must be said that John Galsworthy had an agreement with British International Pictures that not a word of dialogue was to be changed from this play without his say-so. And I read the play, believe me, it is word for word. And uh, to quote, there, there must be no tampering with the play's integrity. Well, that's no fun. I mean, definitely with Alfred Hitchcock, with the movies that are really, really good, and there's so many of them, 
He would find an idea based on a book or a play or something and uh, very briefly, very quickly read the book, love the idea, and go ahead and create cinema. He had no uh, inclination to doing the book. The book is already a masterpiece. The book is already really good. If you really wanted to make the book, it's going to take 6 to 10 to 12 hours to do this thing. He wanted to make something entirely different, really felt that you couldn't compare the two. Uh, as an example, he said, if you ask me about Daphne du Maurier's birds, he has no idea what happens in the book. It, it's just gone in his mind. He moved on. Well, he couldn't really do that with this one, uh, so we will just go ahead and see if, uh, if he was able to create any cinema. So, um, no Hitchcock cameo to look for in this one, uh, this movie from 1931, uh, but an interesting year in that in 1931 both William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy were born. So um, there you go. Alright, so from 1931, our uh, movie today, uh, Hitchcock's The Skin Game. Let's watch.